Welcome back to the Worth Effort Woodworking as today we are going to dive deep into the depths of the dark arts of our craft of woodworking as we kind of explore and maybe dispel some of the concepts out there about sharpening. It isn't all black magic. In my time on this craft, I've come across a lot of different approaches to sharpening. A lot of them, if they're trademarked or something like that, some people are trying to sell you stuff like that. But the general consensus on all of them seems to come down to three main concepts. You're either shaping a blade, you're sharpening it, or you're honing it. Sometimes I've heard people call it grinding, uh, stoning, and stroping, or stropping, whatever dialect you use. Generally, these steps are kind of defined by the grits. And it really doesn't matter what abrasive you use. It could be sandpaper, oil stones, uh, water stones, DMT stones, real diamonds, uh, CBN. It just doesn't matter. The tool doesn't really care. It's just the level of abrasives that kind of defines these different categories. And generally, when we are shaping an edge, we're going to be using grits anywhere from maybe 80 grit, down to maybe a thousand. When we're actually sharpening the tool, you're probably going to be going from a thousand, maybe to four thousand. And when we actually put that final polish, that honing action, you know, it's eight thousand plus. And yes, I do know people that swear that they need to go all the way to thirty-six thousand grit to get the perfect edge, and I'm never going to be that extreme. In fact, the stones I use, I'm not even sure are 8,000, but that's beside the point. The question is, do you really need to go all the way down to this depth on every single tool you own? Here's my kind of turning station. In, in the turning realm, when we sharpen, a lot of times we just, we actually use the term, what's your grind? That's what we're talking about when we're sharpening things. Because we basically come from the grinders straight to our tools. Uh, here are the stones I have. I have a very coarse stone, a medium stone, and a fine stone. And the medium stone, I want to say, is about 180 grit. And my fine stone is 600. I'm kind of wishing now I'd gotten 320 for fine. So whenever I sharpen, I'll turn on my grinder, I'll come over, let it ramp up. And my sharpening regimen is basically this. Light, Heavy, light, there we go. I've now got a sharp tool. It currently has a very nice edge, but it also has a burr, a very harsh burr. I mean, your it'll shave bits of your fingernail off with just the burr. And in the turning world, that is all you need. I mean, look at the, this side of the blade. You can see grind marks on it. That side of the blade, you can still see grind marks on it. You can probably see the burr right here. But look at the results you can get with only 180 grit. Nice, smooth cut that is so smooth you can receive the reflection of the blade actually in the wood. That is just glass smooth. I don't care. You, I could sharpen this up to 2,000, 8,000 grit. I'm really not going to get a better surface than that which I got from 180 grit. And really on a tool like that going up higher isn't even going to make it more durable. Because I'm, I'm turning over a mile of wood a minute at this speed, at this size, going over a blade. It's going to dull fairly quickly. I mean, I'm going back and forth all the time. So 180 grit shaping or grinding is all you really need to do when you got this kind of speed and power. And power, in my mind, is kind of a defining aspect that a lot of people don't talk about in their sharpening uh, regimen. Uh, the more power you're applying with the tool, in actuality, you're not going to be sharpening it as high as you would with a tool that has the least amount of power. We'll come back to that towards the end. Now, I'm sure everybody out there has heard the adage, a sharp tool is a safe tool. And I'm a firm believer in that. 
especially when you don't have a lot of power that you're applying to the blade. Because if you are having to force a blade into wood, then there's dangerous things happening. You just need it to be sharp enough so you're not having to force it. On that lathe, I'm just barely touching the wood to get those results. So that's going to be sharp enough. So right now, I just pulled off my uh, Veritas chisel. This is my go-to chisel for that. I'm not going to sharpen that. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this uh, uh, Narex one, and then we're going to examine the edges. And I think that's going to explain a lot about these steps. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any length at all, you know my sharpening setup. I use DMT stones just because they're convenient. Uh, I basically have a coarse, medium, fine, super, super fine. It corresponds anywhere from a thousand to uh, 8,000. I also keep in back this flattening stone, which is about 250, I believe, 220, somewhere in there. It, it's pretty coarse. So what I have on my chisel is, if you can see it, I hollow grind my chisels, which means I go to my grinder and I very coarsely take off this middle section just to get rid of material so that when I do come to my stones, I'm not having to remove that much metal which means that you end up seeing a little shiny spot on the base here and here. I never allow my grinder to touch these two spots, so I really don't care what those grits are. Personally, I use a 36 grit wheel for, to get rid of that metal because it, it doesn't have as much friction, it removes metal fast, and it doesn't heat because less friction, less grits, less contact, doesn't heat up as well, as much. I am trying out these new wheels, so I'm going to drop it in here, tighten it up, set my angle by setting the protrusion, and then here we go. In real time, put a little water, or I use Simply Green on it. This edge is actually pretty good. I'm just show, doing this for the technique, so I'm not going to go all the way down the grit, but this is how fast it works for me. Making sure all my finger pressure is here, the back thumbs are just pushing, using it for direction. A few swipes, feel for a burr. I got a burr. We're now on 4,000. Notice how much metal comes off. I have a burr. Come back over. Feel for a burr. And each consecutive stone, the burr gets smaller and smaller. Generally, the burr comes off in my rag, but if it doesn't, I make sure to take it off on the stone because the last step I will always come over and just do the back like that. There we go. I've now got a sharp chisel. If I had any nicks or something like that, I would have started down here and I might have spent, you know, if it's a bad nick, maybe 10-15 seconds over here. But that's how fast it takes for me to sharpen a chisel. And you can see from before and after how much material I actually removed. So, by coming back to these stones, you know, I only get about five or six sharpenings before I need to go re remove a little bit more grinder, simply because I'm kind of heavy-handed. Which is why I try not to use my stones very often. Most of the time, I'm going to be honing using this piece of leather right here. But honing can only take you too far. So right here, this is my Veritas, this is my daily go-to. It's got some daily use on it. It is ready for me to do a little bit of honing. I'm going to try and rotate it so you can see the edge. And if you see any kind of light reflecting off the edge, you know it needs to be sharpened. Whereas this one I just sharpened, you can see there's absolutely, you can, cannot see the edge at all. I'm going to try and get it in focus. Where's the focus point? Okay, you just can't see the edge at all. This one, you can see a little bit of light reflecting off of that edge. But the problem with all leathers and why this uh, horse hide is so nice is because it's very stiff, but there's a little bit of give to it. So if you notice on this edge, and this is as close as I can zoom in, can you see it's ever so slightly rounded over? Can you see that a little bit right there? The way it's reflecting and you can see some brighter spots where it's been nicked or something like that so typically when I hone I've got this stroke the green rouge right here what I'm doing is I'm finding hear that 
that's that uh, hollow grinding. If I find it where it's resting on both sides, and then I just lift it up a little bit, and that's my angle. So I'm honing down, and it just touches this edge. And I'll do you know ten swipes in the rouge. This is a new new stroke to me. Normally they're more wear worn. And then I'll flip it over to the smooth. Remove the burr. And then now, let's see, the, get the focus point. Let me refocus. If you look at the edge, you can't really see that those high spots anymore. And the edge itself kind of disappears to black. So I've now got a sharp edge, but the profile has slightly changed. It's rounded a little bit steeper. And you could do that for a certain amount of time, but eventually you're removing too much metal. And that's where I will go back to the stones because the stones will remove that little rounding. I personally like using a jig on the stones because it, it resets that whole setup to dead flat. So now when I'm uh, stroping, all I'm doing is taking off that very tip and it goes quicker. And also stroping makes your edges last longer because you're removing less metal. And that is the same technique I use for all of my edge tools I'm using with my hand, be it a hand plane or you know, something like a carving tool. And the carving tools, you, you hone a lot to maintain their edges because you're using so little amount of power to press them through the wood. So I'm now showing you two extremes in my sharpening regimen. A tool that I only sharpen to, you know, maybe 180 grit, and tools that I sharpen as high grit as possible. But how high do you really need to? Again, I think it comes down to the power applied safely. Let's take a chisel, uh, I mean a hand plane. I've got a cool piece of spalted pecan right here. Let's go ahead and clamp it up. And this time I'm going to gra grab my lapping plate. And I did just look it up. This is 160 grit. So let's take the blade and sharpen it up to this grit. You can notice the back is pretty polished. So we'll give it a quick squirt. Come over, I'm gonna find my angle. I'm gonna put my pressure on both sides and a little in the middle. Just come over and give it a good sharpening. Now when you're getting at this, at this grit level, you'd end up kind of getting a harsh burr on the back side. It's not quite thing, but we can see on the front, you can see it is not polished at all. You see all those lines and it goes all the way to the edge. I'm not even going to remove that burr. Let's just go ahead and put it straight into the plane. And I'm going to back it off and then progress it until I see just a shadow coming through because light's going to come in. That shadow will tell me you got a good protrusion and I will then kind of Center it so the protrusion is just in the middle. Tighten it up. And then always use your finger underneath to feel it. You want to develop that feel for your protrusions because over, over a short amount of time you'll get a feel for how thick a shaving you're going to be getting. I'm taking a pretty, a, a medium shaving here. So I'll take a few swipes to flatten this board out. And there's the surface we end up with, okay? I want you to notice the details over here. So real quickly, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark down 160 on this. And I'm going to cut it off and the details will be reflected in the shaving that I take off. So there we go, I'll set this one aside. We basically have the 160 written in it.
and I've set that aside. Now, something I don't know how to express is the amount of force I had to use to push that through. I was using a little bit more muscle than I normally would, which would affect control because if I'm focusing more on pushing forward, I'm focusing less on control side to side, getting a level of stuff like that. It wasn't that much of a difference though. I'm now going to go, I'm going to go up to 1000 grit sharpening this stone, this blade. And this is how fast it takes. Squirt, squirt. I'm at 160. I'll come over a few swipes on the coarsest one. And yes, I do use freehanding quite a bit because I find it faster. And a lot of times I will hone just on the 8,000 grit on my blades instead of using the leather just because it's easy. And once again, I'm not going to remove the burr, just I'm going to let the wood take off the burr on those first few swipes. I'm also not worrying that much about the thickness of the shavings. I'm getting them all to my finger feel to be about equal, but it doesn't really matter. So I take a few swipes just to clear it off. Then we're going to mark it 1000 and take that shaving. I will say these were noticeably easier to push through. I felt a lot more control. Notice I'm moving smoother because of that. And there we go. The 1000 is going to be on this shaving and I will set it aside. And then I will rinse and repeat at 4,000 and 8,000 and we will examine. Though I, I should say that on the last uh, grit, the 8,000, I do do the ruler trick on the back just to take care of that burr. That's about all I do. And what that does is it just makes sure I have a mirror smooth finish on that last little bit. I, on a plane blade, you don't really have to worry about flattening the whole thing because it's in a plane. The bottom of the sole is a flat part. And on the 8000, even less effort and more control. And I'll try to transpose the first one and the last one right now. Can you hear can you hear the difference? This is definitely smoother going through the wood. And here's the end result. Now, all of these from 160 grit all the way to the 8,000 grit, those are passable, passable surfaces, nice and smooth and stuff like that. But I want you to notice that on the 160 grit, yes, you're getting a little bit more tear out because it's taking more force to push the wood, meaning you're getting more resistance. But also, I want you to look at this. Notice I've got the pinhole knot in the same spot on all of them. Look at the clarity of the wood on all of them. You can see that you get more detail the farther up you go. The higher grit gets you more detail in your surface finish. But I want you to think about that. How often are you needing to pull that kind of detail from the finish of what the blades you're using? Generally, if you're carving, yeah, carving knife. Right off the knife, you want to do, get that perfect finish. If you're doing that last shading with the smoothing plane, sure, you want it to be the utmost finish. But both of those tools that you want to put as little effort into it and gain the most control with it. A hand plane, I'm using my whole body to play shavings with it. I can put weight behind it. I have some power with it. I don't necessarily need the 8,000 super polish ultimate uh, finish edge to get the work done. In fact, planes like your scrub plane, which is designed to remove lots of material, whether you're going across the grain to flatten a board or you're going along the uh, board to remove that you know half inch of material down to your waistline instead of sawing the whole thing, 
you just want to get it done. So as long as you're feeling safe, you don't really need to sharpen it up to that mirror polish 8,000 plus grit. And if you look, think about it more, those old timers that we all covet their skill level, most of them just walked around with an Arkansas stone, whether hard or soft. If they were really lucky, they had both. And neither of those, neither of those are at the grit we were look, working with. And most of them kept some kind of stroke on their bench or something like that to use with their chisels, not necessarily their hand planes. And if you want to take it even extremer, you know, what tool is a bunch of chisels in a row? A handsaw. And we sharpen these things with a file, probably not even 80 grit, and we get good results up with them. So, but they aren't giving you a surface ready finish. All right, they're giving you a glue up ready finish. And consider the other tools in your shop, you know, the ones with a little bit more power. When they sharpen these, they sharpen them with a grinding wheel. They aren't putting a mirror polish finish on these. You can even see the grinding marks on the surface of the tooth when you get them back to the sharpening thing. It's because they have power. They don't need to be that polished edge. So I guess what I'm getting at with this to kind of bring it all together is to a lot of new woodworkers and even experienced woodworkers that maybe want to come into the hand twirl world in order to refine their joinery, sharpening these things are kind of intimidating. It does appear to be black magic a lot of times. But if you look at what you're doing with the tools, how you're using them safely, a hand plane is an extremely safe tool. If it is not at 8,000 grit sharpness, even if it's only at, you know, 160 grit sharpness, you can get the thing to work very well. So you don't have to acquire all those giant sharpening uh, setup jigs to get it to the polished finish. And you don't even really have to worry too much about the angles that much. As long as it's working for you, you can get it through the wood safely. A chisel, on the other hand, you're using finger pressure. You don't have a lot of power with it. If you are having to put power into it, that means it's going to be unsafe. So these are the tools that you need to take to the ultimate sharpness. But once again, you don't have to have everything. Even those old timey letter carvers, that kind of stuff that needed the ultimate sharp tool, a lot of them were just using an Arkansas stone and a stroke to get that surface finish. The Arkansas show, stone, uh, the coarse one would shape it, the fine one would sharpen it, the leather would hone it to get the results. But how many tools in your collection are you using finger pressure and getting a surface ready finish off of the tool? Your chisels, and your smoothing planes, your carving lines. Everything else, just sharpen as best you can and don't worry about it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe in seeing the techniques I use and the actual speed it takes to sharpen something, it removes a little bit of the intimidation and you'll just get out and try it. Worst case scenario, you have to resharpen it. Well, y'all be safe and have fun. Remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create stuff, and share it with others.